Hey there, this is a tutorial on how to get started on Node.js. I'm going to assume that you know little to nothing about Node.js already. Uh, and if you already do, no worries, it's still going to be a really quick, straight to the point tutorial. Uh, so I'm going to assume you do not have Node.js installed. If you don't have Node.js installed and you have Homebrew on your Mac, then you need to go Brew Install Node. That simple. I already have Node installed, so I'm not going to run that. It's my preferred way of installing Node. If that's not, uh, if you don't have Brew, then you can go to Node, what is Node.js's? Node.js.org, I believe, yeah. You can go and download it there. That also works. I have had more success using Homebrew to install it. Uh, it does install on Windows just fine. I've used Node on Windows for years as well. Uh, I do prefer using it on Mac and Linux environments, though. Okay, once that is installed, uh, we're going to use Express.js Framework, which is the, the most popular, hands down, framework for Node. Oftentimes, people say Node, and they mean Express, because Express just gets used that much. And it's really quick and easy to use. Um, so we're going to install that with Node Package Manager, or NPM. Node comes pre-installed with NPM anymore, so we're going to go NPM install G, which means global which will make it an executable available everywhere. Or if it's an executable, it has to be installed global. If you run into errors here, it's probably because you installed it with a method that requires administrator access for global things. So you'll have to run sudo npm install g express and do a password. I've often found they may have changed it, but when I install node with the package from nodejs.org, it tends to require sudo every time you're installing a global. I prefer Homebrew for installing because it just works better. Okay, so we have Node installed, and we have Express installed, and now Express gives us a great app, so you can just go Express, and I'm just going to go Express Test. And that will generate an app. Oh, apparently I already have something called Express Test. Let me go Express Test. Express. There we go. There we go. Now it ran. Now you're telling me all it has to do is I might need to go CD test express and npm install. npm install will take the package file that it created for me and install all the dependencies that it needs right away. Let's look at that package file real quick. I'm going to add the folder to my project. Let's go sandbox. What was that called? Test express. I'm going to add this to my project. When you generated your Node app with Express, it created this package JSON file, uh, which you can also manually do yourself, but I really prefer having Express generate it for me. It's, it's instant. And you can see we have two dependencies here, Express, which is the local one, not the global one that we already installed, and Jade, which by default, it's going to use Jade templates for the views. I'm not the biggest fan of Jade. Uh, Maybe I've just developed an HTML too long to feel more comfortable and more quick with that. Uh, but if you like Jade, by default, it's going to do Jade, and it's going to give your public resources as CSS. Uh, another thing you can do is you can do Express, and I prefer X Hogan as my templating. So I'm going to go dash dash Hogan. And I'm going to dash C for CSS, and I'm going to go less. There we go. So now I'm going to get into Express Hogan. Let me drop that folder from my project and get into my Express Hogan project. Aha, much better. So here we go. Now my views are Hogan, which I just feel more comfortable. Hogan's basically mustache for those of you guys who are not familiar with it. And in our public style sheets, we have less going on. So that's it. And all you have to do at this point to run the app is go node app.js. And it's running on port 3000. So I can go localhost, port 3000. There you go. Welcome to Express. So let's start diving into what actually you do. Uh, actually, let me just kind of recap that. So you're going to install Node with either brew install Node or go to Node.js and install it there. You're going to install Express globally. 
either going npm install g express doesn't matter where you are in your file system to install it or sudo npm install g express if uh, there's a problem with that and then you're going to go generate an app which is express and then app name see you can also do a uh, stylus less you can't do sass because i think it uh considers less and sass to be about the same thing you, there might be scss or there might be a key for sass i'm not aware of it hogan you can do ejs for that you can do those as optional for the templating languages so that's kind of how you generate an app and then you do npm install and that will grab all your dependencies which is only two or if you did in this case, we have less going on and we have HGS. We're using Hogan now. It'll install all your dependencies. So the whole thing's there in the package, um, which is really nice. And then you just run it. Run app. Node app.js. There you go. And now our app is running. So let's look into this actual app.js file and see what's going on. It's loading express. Uh, it's loading routes, which is just our routes file. Uh, it's loading the index by default and it's also loading a routes user they're just kind of these are kind of boilerplate things for you uh, and http and path are the things that it actually uses so i'm going to go ahead and comment on all the boilerplate stuff uh, it's setting the port to 3000 you can change that if you want it's setting the default directory for our views so it knows where all the views come from and it's setting our view engine to hogan this all happened in the generation process using a favcon. Uh, we've turned on our logger since we're in the development environment. I'm actually going to change that down here. So only if we're in development environment, use the logger. Uh, it's using a lot of other things. Express JSON, code URL. So there it's going to use app.router. Uh, this tells it to initialize the router. It's using less middleware, so it'll automatically compile less as you go. It can use it real time. And then it's creating a static file to our public directory, so we can actually grab public slash images JavaScript style sheets. Uh, so if I go 3000 slash style sheets style.less, well, browser doesn't know what to do with it, but I just downloaded that file. So if that was a JavaScript file, I can real time access those, you know, through my HTML pages. So that's kind of what it's set up there. You really don't need to touch this ever unless you're going to add more things in different order. You know, say I want to add something else in this order. That's pretty much it. Here's your development environment. So you can do different things if you're in a production environment. And then here it's doing app get slash. This is kind of the routes enabling. So we've loaded in our routes, we've loaded in our user, and that's where it's using this. Here we're defining the routes. So our local, our, our default base route goes to routes.index, and our users goes to users.list. And then it spins up the server, and it tells it to the console, you're listening on port 3000. So that's pretty much our whole application at this point. Let's take a look at the routes index file. All it does is it does exports index. Kind of the deal with Node.js is it uses the common JS format. So whatever a module exports, you can either do module, module exports, and we can add a whole object here. And that will be what happens when you require it. That's will be, that will be what the required gets. So when we require routes, we're getting whatever exports is. So basically we require routes, it's going to automatically look for the index file, and it's going to look for whatever our module exports object is, and that's what it gets. So we have routes.index, this is the other notation you can use, is just exports. Dot. And we are doing only this, we are rendering the index file, and we're passing it the parameters of title equals express. So let's go ahead and look at what this ob what's going on right here. Tell you what, I'll actually go back into the app so it remains simple in our minds. Let's, if you're feeling confused at this point, I'm going to kill that code, and I'm going to kill this code. We're going to do everything in this file for right now. 
So what you can do is you can do app.get. That's going to look for a git request on this address. Just slash. And we're going to go function rec res next. These are the three things that get passed to any git, put, delete, post. They're going to auto always get rec, which is your request, response, which is what our response is going to be, and next, which is you can actually chain things. If you hit next, then it's going to look for the next thing that matches our current URL. Uh, we're not going to use next right now. So basically, I can go really quickly. I can just go res.send, which if we use send, then it's going to send whatever we put in there straight to the browser. If we use res.render, then it's going to use our current templating library and look for a template to output. So that's kind of the two things you'll use to spit stuff back out to the browser. If we go res.send, here's some text, and say done. I need to go ahead and re-spin up my server. There you go, here's some text. And if I look here at my network, you'll notice by default my type is text HTML. It automatically set the text correctly. So if I put a, I can also put a JSON object in here. I gotta cancel my server, spin it up again. There you go. And you'll notice now my type is application.json. So it is really, really easy to generate web services and RESTful services with Express. It is just lightning fast, very, very little code to be done. I can do a res.render, and then the path of my file, index. Let me cancel that, spin it up again. If you'll notice, it's getting really old, really fast, to cancel and spin up my server. I'll show you how to address that in just a second. So that looked for index, because if you'll remember up here, we have set our views is right there, app set views. And by default, our uh, we're going to be using views as our engine. Our view engine looks for views. So it's pulling up this, it's looking for a title pretty much just looking for a title. So let's go back to app.js and make sure we're passing a object to our file here. Give it a title of my app. Now it's called my app. The title gets my app and my app is everywhere. My awesome app, if I could spell. my awesome app. So that's pretty much Express right there. It's not much more complicated than that. Let's go app.get API. Let's say we're making an API. Let's just make up some data. Once again, name. Ah. I'm not 33, I'm 23. No, let's be honest. Let's be honest with ourselves here. So now I can close it, spin it up, and go to localhost 3000 API. There we go. And now I've got my API response. So it's quick and very, very, very easy. Now let's look at what's going on here. It's pretty bad development-wise to define your routes in your actual app file. So what they've done here is they've broken out a routes require routes and they've actually put some stuff in here I usually won't define any routes in the app unless it's a very small app like what their demo is giving you here so usually what I will do is something a little more along the lines of this I'll just go require routes And I'll put that at the bottom because I want to make sure the app gets fully booted. We've already initialized the router before I start doing any routing action. Let's go to the routes index. And then I will define them here. I will also go up to app. And I will make sure. I'll make sure that, my, that exports is uh, getting 
I will, I, what I'll do is I'll make sure that my app, which is the initialized express, is getting passed to the exports. So now down here I can require this app file even before it's all the way executed and I'll get the exports will be app. Basically I'll show you what that means here is I can go app equals So now I have app here and I can do app.get Oh, no method get. I forgot I need to do module.exports. There we go. There you go. And so now all I have to do is hit require routes. And so now all my out routes are abstracted out to this index file. I can do all my home stuff here. And then if I want to require stuff from my other, I can go require user. And that'll load in any routes that I've defined in this user file. So that's kind of how I'll break out a larger app. I won't do anything in the app.js file as far as routes concern. I'll just kind of load my routes index and I'll have that do everything. If it starts getting to be a really big file with lots of routes, then I'll start breaking it out and just require different files and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and look into how can I make this workflow a lot better because this is getting really annoying to automatically be canceling and restarting it. Kind of the reason we have to do that on Node uh, just in case you guys aren't familiar kind of with why Node works the way it does, is if you're working on something else, when you make a request for the file, your web server's running, it's going to go grab those files real time, run through them, run through the compilation process every single time. With Node, the big difference is, is when you spin up Node, it grabs all the dependencies, loads everything, and sits there waiting for callbacks on routes. So we've defined these, it's going to load up every file, every dependency at load up, and then it's just going to sit there and wait. And as requests come in, it handles them all asynchronously without grabbing any dependencies, without grabbing any file system stuff. And that's kind of the beauty of Node. Uh, the only difference is, is for development, you don't want to be canceling and rerunning your Express app every single time you change a, a single line of code just to be able to see it. So we're going to use something called NodeMon, which is great for Node Monitor, Node Monitoring, and somehow I'm running in updates. So we're just going to go npm install g for global NodeMon. Once again, you might have to use sudo on that. All right, that's installed. We're still on our deal, so I can go nodemon app.js. And now it's automatically going to listen to any changes I have. So if I go to my home, it automatically restarts my server, notice the file changed, and now everything's good. Ah, the workflow has been resolved. Um, if you're doing anything other than back end and you want to add front end stuff, there's a great tool called yeoman.io which will also do generators for apps, and it'll also do live reload for you. Uh, once again, that's yeoman.io. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on that sometime. This is your boilerplate intro to express.js and Node. Let me know if you have any questions, any uh, further things that you'd like to see on this. Have a great day.